Uh, we still got on. Recording. Morning, Gemma. Morning. Welcome morning. to the Fun Factory. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <morning. laughs> oh dear. I haven't put my makeup on yet. I've been so busy. <laughs> Out running the dog. Excuse my dog. He just decides. Oh, I he have. To I just. In. I was just going to say I haven't got the shirt <laughs> with a hole in, but I have. <laughs> oh. oh dear. <laughs> It started with a hole in my jumper. I just, and it's red gone through the jumper into the shirt now. I, Melanie's looking at me saying, you've got, you know, you've got holes. I'll have to patch it up and all this sort of thing. Oh. I said, nah, don't bother. I can't, it's not worth it. I'll put it in the charity bag. Mm. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so she, I'm just going for the pity element so yeah, at some point she'll feel sorry for me and buy me a new shirt <laughs> well we live in hope can't see gordon your eyes are dark gordon uh Anne's incognito yeah. oh is that why all right okay so we can't see you very well yeah, in if, your shadows <laughs> if you capture her video if you capture her image on camera and that it'll take her soul and Oh, no, she's feeling poorly. Oh, bless. <laughs> Is that still from the COVID, Anne? Dreaded COVID. Oh. Oh, that's better. <laughs> that's not Anne. Jenna. No. <laughs> she's, she's, she's much better looking than that. And Anne's doing the lighting engineer bit at the moment. Oh. <laughs> oh, Morning, yeah. Gemma. Welcome to the group. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to see you. <laughs> oh dear. I think we've got um, um Joyce and Pauline. We're, we're we're a bit early, aren't we? Yeah. Wow. Oh. Whatever. What's the what's the um here's here's Pauline. Speak of them. Speak no, of the yeah. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you nearly did. <laughs> Usually, it comes up. Oh. If I click on it, it says "Ask to start video." But it, oh yeah, there we go. Because if people are using this their thing, if I it comes up as a black thing, if I click it and ask to start the video then they you get a button come up don't you on your phone or yeah, your screen yeah. and you can just click it and away you go otherwise it's like oh what do we do <laughs> hello pauline's chicken day come well, on probably can't get in <laughs> where are you based Gemma? i'm in leeds oh, we're big up north this where, where, all, where is everyone else they're all down in dorset yeah. <laughs> Not very sunny Dorset today either. No, horrible. I think it's it's not very good at all. No, it's really, really rainy here. Mm. Have you done a lot of painting before or? Um, off and on. So I think watercolour is the one I've struggled with the most and like knowing what to do, like stretching paper. But it's like my New Year's uh, resolution to do more painting and things mm. and shit. Oh, we'll get you sort we'll get we'll sort you out but like i said <laughs> if you, there'll be you can't go through the whole lot in one go but like i said in my email if you get um specific a, a list of specific things then just we'll just do an hour so this zoom session one to one hey. and just go through it there's a good way of doing it I, I keep forgetting to tell people that and uh they go away sort of feeling intimidated or whatever thinking everybody else is brilliant and all the rest and they're not <laughs> they just started on gradually built up so you can't just jump in on a tuesday and start selling paintings for 400 quid on a thursday afternoon you know oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> i made that up i thought that was quite oh, cool. oh dear i don't <laughs> think anybody would want mine <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's yeah well i'm, I'm your biggest fan oh. 
<laughs> That's all right then. It's the best. Oh. Should we have a look? Improved over the years. I've got quite a few comfort. <clears throat> Ah, <coughs> uh, frogging me throat. Who's this? Hang on, artists. I got a late arrival this morning for um picture of the week. <laughs> Maybe we should do a competition. <laughs> yeah, P O W. Picture of the week. Every week. Enough as it is. <laughs> yeah. Don't put more pressure on us. No. <laughs> This was a late. This is a late one from last. This is last week's subject, Gemma. We, what we tend to do now, all right, is if unless people have got a photograph of their own that they can email and we'll use that as a subject. I go on to the um, paint my photo site and. You know, if an image attracts me or whatever, you know, it just catches your eye, we'd use that. What's paint my photo? Mm. Is that where people submit things? Yeah, they say so they they can you can submit artwork, but obviously I'm more interested in reference photos, and uh, people love it. You you know, we've done a, quite a few now, and some portraits as well. And then I post mine up there a few days later you know once i've tidied it up or whatever and um some of the, the comments that you get like people saying oh that is amazing you know no one's <laughs> negative they're always like there's a lady we did a portrait of and i put my posted that up there to her because they don't get feedback they don't think anyone's taken any notice of their photo so um put a link to that on and she was like gobsmacked <laughs> oh wow that's me <laughs> you know, it's, it's oh. great and you've done a good one here yeah it's lovely mm. yeah it's really good enjoyed doing it it was um detail mm. it was the funny picture mm. it was a oh i don't feel like doing that uh, the no. initial initial what? thing but once you've got going yeah. and um got stuck into it it became quite quite addictive i it think was, i spent yeah, a bit more time on mine on my, uh, yeah, the colors actually mm. well the background <laughs> doesn't matter does it? it it could be whatever it wants it's it's that's what i said last week you know if you get confused with the patterns just put you know, brown circles pansies or just flower things and just mix and paint in worked well yeah balance is good there the harder bit the hardest bit i think everyone's <laughs> gonna have the same issue oh that was carol she did a posted stamp posted oh. stamp for her. <laughs> oh, i'm sorry <laughs> i think i blew it up oh yeah a little bit oh it's because mm. i said yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> one thing i did do was um I changed the title from Apple <laughs> Still Life to Fruit in a Bowl. Because <laughs> mm. when I finished mine, I thought, well, I don't know if that's an apple <laughs> or a peach or no. whatever. The bowl was hard to draw. I couldn't get that right. Ah, uh, tell mm. me about it. They are, I did say last time we did one with a bowl, like this sort of thing, because it to get the perspective and the sketch and, the, and, and all that stuff, so I said we ain't doing that again in a hurry, and I, obviously <laughs> I, I forgot about that. <laughs> well, that's good. The it's um the hard bit, and I think everyone's, including me, struggled with it. Or it's the the it's supposed to be on a tabletop sort of background. The the because we're using watercolor. Chrissy's might be different. You'll see hers in a minute. Getting that opaqueness and darkness of mm. the wood and that and for the shadow, especially around where the mouse is there, in here where the, yeah. I suppose it's a curtain or a cloth where it meets it. It's a, it's a really dark area there. And over here, it's where it meets the um, bowl. It was a shadow there as well. And it's really, really tough. I, I, 
I think I washed mine out a few times, oh, at, least, at least once or twice. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. See, Chrissy's yeah. used acrylic. So much brighter, isn't mm. it? <laughs> it's good. Well, that's just the nature of the beast. You're painting with plastic, effectively. Mm. Liquid <laughs> plastic. But, um, but she's, because you get that more opacity, that higher opacity, then you can get away with it, you know. Mm. I think if I was, if it was me, I'd have made the. No, I don't. It's, it's all right, but you know, <laughs> it's just that you can see what I'm on about. It's that base bit. If I, I remember yeah. looking at the reference, thinking it's really dark where the curtains meet the table there, and it was also dark over here, which is such a difficult decision on without getting too arty farty about bringing stuff forward and back and stopping it from floating in midair which is what you can what you tend to get by not creating the that's what I was going to say was if it was lighter underneath the bowl and darker there and there then it would make it slightly mm. um, sit better trouble is like Chrissy does when I'm <laughs> as I'm painting she'll spot a mistake and say oh is that that looks like so and that's it it looks like mm. that looks like a, a werewolf or that I can see a face in that <laughs> and from that point on during the demonstration demonstration or through the as I'm working all I can see is that anomaly <laughs> I think it yeah you can brighten it up using but you can see I've tried I've had I've struggled with it on this one, trying to get that dark bit over on the where it meets the the bowl there, the shade, and over here. So we'll talk about that later. But you can see I actually I went through mine again with um watercolour pencil. Mm. I cheated a bit because I, I I thought it's not looking like an apple. Um so it's a bit of a heads up. We might do this get a similar thing today. And I also put some washes back on the fruit and use the end of the brush <laughs> to scratch some veins because apples have those sort of uh, lines on them. Well, that's what I found. And the marmots got today. It relates to today because that, as long as I remember to do it. Got the same thing on there. That's Pauline. That was I like that background. That's brilliant. That sort of diffused feel to it. Yeah, that was only because I got in a mess and I didn't like it, so I just washed over it and just dabbed some colour on. <laughs> Happy accident. So it yeah. does work that. But... It weren't easy doing the curtains, was it? No, no. I... It was the I knew it was going to be a challenge, but that's mm. what we're here for. Um, yeah, but the thing is, I sometimes I put, as you know, I, I I look at mine Wednesday morning and think, oh, I'm not happy with that. So I'll go and I'll put, I hang it over the side of the bath, get the shower head, and start sh scrubbing off the bits off. that I don't like. Oh, but you, but you, although it's watercolor, it, the um. It's more some colours are more staining than others, and they stain in the colour. You never get it off. You never get back to white. So you end up with quite a nice effect sometimes. So it's as long as you can keep the um, primary focus object that you put, that you want to keep dry or dryish. I did it the other week with the. Um, no, it's lovely that with the. Um, Kids on the Muddyford Beach thing. I, but I masking. I used masking fluid on it first, and then chucked it all in the bath. <laughs> but oh. that didn't work. Mm -mm. Mm. Not very, not very effective. So yeah, well done all. Good. <laughs> well, you can see why I said about the fruit. Chrissy's. My apple looks like it's trying to escape. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't start that because once you start seeing different things in it, that's it now. Mm. Pictures forever going to be stuck on that that vein. Right. 
Um, there's another. There's another. Today's little. Oh, hang on. Let's get cracking. Otherwise, oh, wrong one. I've got folders open here to save time, and now I can't find the flipping folders. One's called ah, oh, there it is. Called marmot. <laughs> what? Is a marmot, everyone says. Oh, I'm <laughs> flipping there. Where did that come? Why did we? Why did I choose it? I, I have no. Hang on, it's gone now. <laughs> Hang on. I'm good at this technology. As you know, I've got a degree in computing. <laughs> I have to... No, that's wrong. It's picking up the wrong thing. Share screen. Here we comes. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Whose idea was this? <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> well, it's a challenge, isn't it? It's, I think it's rather cute, actually. Oh, I can't what? wait till we finish with him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll soon sort that out. He it won't might look, not look like a man. Like a man. <laughs> well. It's good to, I mean, I like to look at look at the screen a bit. And sometimes if you go back, you can, from your initial sort of look in, you, view in, you can sort of see things. I was looking at it this morning, seeing a lot more in it than um, <laughs> I initially did when I was sketching it. And I'm thinking, yeah, where's the light coming from? Difficult, isn't it? I, I was thinking it was, from the the left hand side earlier, but looking at it again now, it's almost like it's coming from the front. There's a, there is a shadow, isn't there, down the bottom, uh, on his right hand side. Like this. Anyway, we. I don't really <laughs> don't see too much into, it, but he is cute. He does look a bit like my dog. There's that sort mm -hmm. of niceness about him. <coughs> the sketch ah oh, what I was going to mention was I initially I thought I tried it earlier this morning was to look at the pick out the highlights Gemma when we paint watercolour the key thing to do is, is to remember this one statement and never forget it light behind the dark what that means is you look at your subject and you paint, look, look for the lightest colour in the image. Everyone's eyes are different. Everyone's brain sees the colour different. But that's what makes your picture special <laughs> or different from everyone else's. Is look for the lighter colours. And that's the first, um, the first thing you concentrate on when you start, when you pick out the brush and you paint. Look, look for the, the lightest colours. I have to keep reminding myself of it all the time. But I'm going to hit a caveat on that because I can, we're going to break that rule in a minute, but it's in the back. But that rule is in the back of mind and it is going to stay there, but we're going to break it initially. But only a teeny weeny bit. It's like I'm... Hang on. I do a grid one when I send them out because that can help you when you're sketching. I use the grid system, but on this subject today, I didn't. And I, I, there's a reason for that. I'll tell you how I do. I print out, let me change, I'll stop this and I'll, I'll go to where I am. Where's, change my camera. This is, there it goes. Changed my microphone. We are recording, so that's cool. Because I don't want to do this over again. <laughs> um, a second. I've got my hair. <laughs> got my seat. Here we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
What I was going to say, <clears throat> what I normally do, Jenna, just quickly, is I'll, I use... Uh, it looks like... Don't go back to it. It looks like tracing paper, but mm -hmm. it isn't. It's um, it's it's called type. It's Frisk, F R I S K, where the manufacturers. It's called Frisk Typo, and it's detail paper. And what I normally do is print out. Is this the Marmot? Yeah, I've got here it is. I'll print out, I'll create um, a printout with a grid. This is an online thingy tool that I can print any picture and add grids to it. So normally it'd be like five, no more than six usually. I usually go to the down width because I don't want too many um, squares going down because I've only got so big a piece of paper. It's always usually about a three sheet watercolor paper and then what i do now is i draw i'll create this grid on the detail paper and then i'll draw from i draw the um subject using the grid so you, you can get the, you can get what i'm on about you can just sort of if you number it one to whatever one to four. i usually do alphabet one side and numerical the other and then you can just sort of sketch it on and then use i buy um trace down that's frisk as well actually which is like carbon paper if you haven't seen it i'll show you it's it's just a bit like the old Titus stuff, but it's it doesn't smudge. It's it's designed specially for transferring your image over to your watercolor paper. But this time I cheated big time because things like this they got to be fairly accurate pet portraits and things. So I just printed it out and put this between the, the, um, the paper. No, do it that way. So the, the carbon goes on top of it. This goes on top. And then I just did an outline of it quickly. It's just so much. Well, it's easier, and it's also you get a a, a better rendition. I did doodle one yesterday as well, and just to see what, if anything, pitfalls were. Didn't find any specific apart from. What I was saying earlier about the, the highlights, let me just tear that off now. But the beauty of doing it this way with the frisk stuff, the detail paper is like you get, I've got a whole wadge of these and I just punch holes in them and keep them on, tre on treasury tags as a little pile. So if ever I want to do another sketch of it, I'm off. I can do it really quickly because some of these subjects are really nice and if I didn't ever get any time or somebody says, oh, that's nice. I love one of those. You know, <laughs> eternal optimist. I'm going to sell pictures. Um, <laughs> I can quite, quite quickly do the outline. But you can. The thing about it is do not matter how you, you can trace and work out all you like, you still don't get much. You don't get a, you know, a really hard and fast, easy 
definition you still need to go over it with um with a pen with a pencil and you know add your own your own little bits now what I was gonna palette wise I'm using if I can find it oh gosh let's say I've lost that Oh yeah, can't find the tents. No, this you're having a laugh. Told you. Ah, oh, there they are. <laughs> I nearly had a hot flush then. <laughs> oh, I'd lost me paints. And a doodle. I've got a little. It's a good idea if, if, to do a little doodle, just if as a watercolor sketch notebook, note, you know, a guide. Guide. When you do the bigger one later, what was that? No. Wasn't that wasn't that um, rocket coming down from space <laughs> last night? Was it? Virgin, the UK satellite thing, if anybody follows it. There's my palette. Da -da -da. Hadn't changed much. Massive colours. Brushes over here, all neat and tidy, as you can see. One of the things I was going to do, this is what I was talking about earlier, was, don't worry, we'll start with painting in a minute. Looking at my subject, I noticed that uh, I was again. I was looking, thinking all the highlights. So I'm looking at the lightest color, and I thought, what I might do? Ooh, I'll use some masking fluid and just put some lines where I see the light color, the lightest color, the white almost. And uh, but true to form, it it didn't. I got one of these pens, and it didn't. It, worked a bit but then you get big blobby bits and i thought oh cobblers so in the end i went on amazon and i ordered a couple of masking fluid pens so that's but in the meantime i won't use that what i'll do i'll do it a different way which is the way i said i did on the apple on the this is just the lead up to the main event on the on this brush They've kindly they've chamfered it off, and there's like an edge on it that you can use to scratch the paint as it's going. You'll see what that what I'm on about there in a minute, and that gives you those ridges. It's good lines. It's good for foliage as well. Things like that. I'm going to use that in a minute. Enough waffle. Get a brush stick some paint on and this is the rule that i was on about earlier <laughs> that i'm going to break Let's swap my water over i've got two buckets of water Ta -da! there's one one's clean and one's got diluted masking fluid in it don't like painting with plastic no silicone Right. Oh, I'm like a coiled spring, raring to go. What the rule I was going to break, relating to always look for the light, lightest side first, was I'm going to look at the, when you're painting, I'm going to treat this like a portrait. So I'm just going to look for all the shadowy, shady bits first. There's two ways of approaching that as well. All the info is here. Um, if I can find there it is. If you look at a colour wheel, any old colour wheel, we've made this ourselves. Didn't take long, it's two. Um, the shadow of a subject I was doing it last, I mentioned it last week, is invariably the complementary of it. So if it's red, complementary red is green. So a green shade. 
acts as a complementary. So on the apple last week for the shadow areas, I was using a greeny, shadowy color. The shadow color had green in it, so you can use the red and add some green and get that shade shadow. But in this subject, it's bit, <laughs> there is no sort of shadowy definitive color. So the colors I've got in here are burnt sienna, burnt umber, permanent rose stroke, alizarin crimson. That one's called mocha. That's peach, dune, flesh, cobalt. What did I say? Cobalt Tur turquoise. Tur Tur yeah, raw sienna. That's a mix of, there's two little blocks of paint in there. There's one circus green and one's viridian. So I'm scared of one and scared of the other. So mixed together, I'm hoping that they balance each other out. And in here is just blue, uh, cobalt blue one side, ultramarine the other side, but that ain't set in stone either. Anything like that, I'll just, I'll just grab blue and put half and half and mix them together. Yellow. Hmm. Huh. Could be anything in there. Um, golden yellow, I think, is one at the moment. And it's sunset gold, which is a tube of paint that I had lying around. So I just used that. But I don't usually get bogged down to it. Um, which yellows, to me, yellow's yellow. These colours are um, St. Petersburg ones that I like to use it started off when we were painting portraits and they seem like the good colors to use and they are just stuck with them now but if i get um as a way of an intro if you ever need to buy some watercolor paints and you want to start off with a bang get the saint petersburg sets that will last you forever for a lifetime and you just top up the ones that that you use. This is the big set, but you can get smaller ones. Pauline uses these, I think. And Carol, do you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are brilliant. And the paint, the paint stays um fairly moist for a long time as well. Well, I've had that for years and it's I'm still using it. Uh right. Shadow. So anyway, burnt sienna as he sticks his brush in. Burnt amber, <laughs> burnt sienna, and a little bit of blue. If you mix them together, you'll get a a sort of shadowy tone. But you can adjust that tone as well. So that's the base. But there's no reason why we can't add a little bit of raw sienna in it to warm it up a bit or just make it a bit yellower. Which is nice. Works quite well. And there are paints around that are called just shadow. So and that's quite a nice colour as well. You buy that online. Terry Harrison's sells it. He's dead, but his paint's still around. Bless him. Turn that over. Give me a little bit of paper. So, let's get you got that. It's a nice shadow tone, the one that I mixed. And there's one out of the tin, one out of the tube, even. And it's slightly it's got a little bit more purple and purpliness about it. But you can see where we're going. If you want to make ours a bit purple, we'll add a little bit of purple to it. You can balance, you can, if you mix your own, you can tweak it to colors that you want there you go that's me that's me fiver tutorial sorted <laughs> I can do a bit of painting i'm going to sit down for a sec on my thrusty stool and i'm just gonna as i say break the the rule that i mentioned earlier about 
um, look for the lights. This is what I meant, because I'm actually going to paint the look for the shadows instead. Um, am I zoomed in enough? Do I think I'll go a bit more? Is that better light? That's better, isn't it? One. Almost. That's a bit better. Okay. Yeah. So my initial um, plan of attack is to, even though I've penciled it in quite well, is using this shadow tone. And I have got a piece, and I'm using a rigger as well. What's the rigor? Did I hear you say that, Gemma? Yes. What's a rigor? What's a, a rigor is just a, they used to call them, sometimes they call them liners. Traditionally, they were brushes that were used to paint rigging on ships because you get a really, where's it going? A real fine line. So if you wanted to paint the rigging on a boat, years ago well even today Ooh. you'd use a rigger and you can get a real fine line or foliage uh twigs on a tree that sort of thing <coughs> that's why they're called that sometimes they're called liners because sign writers ooh, look at that sign writers use liners they tend to be more like sword shaped, a bit like that. Anyway, I've got three or four of those sword brushes. I don't think I've ever used them. Why would he want them? And all I'm going to do initially, it's so dark here, I've got the light on. So overcast. Mm. It's unusual that I usually just have the you know with the because I'm facing right on by the window so that the light shines through. But it shows how overcast it is. Now I've started with the light on, I've just got to keep going. So we can the idea is look at the picture and look for some shadowy areas and just paint them in or just drop in some colour. And it's a, it does vary a bit. And I always have a handy Andy in one hand and a brush in the other. And away you go. It's the boring bit. But it's the most important bit because it sets the scene for later. The easy bit is, you know, just doing the, the the blocking in or the you'll see in a minute with the with the main colours. It's fairly straightforward, but this bit is more is more important because it sits it sits underneath and sets the the scene for everything that follows the only problem is is such a hairy little thing that you can, you can't do it as a well you can try as a as a straight forward wash like I've done on that on that piece of paper you can't just do it as a wash like that because it it's not like that it's, it's intermittent isn't it the shadow is under the skin under the fur so i'm just doing it quickly at random is it just me or is this the screen flickering no it, yeah. it, it is yeah yeah i know why that is why thanks chris 
because the light. I've got a. Can I get away with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got, yeah, because the light I've used, um, it's a daylight bulb. Mm. But it's, uh, I think it gets its power. I think it uses USB. So it gets its power off the computer and obviously it frustrates oh. the computer. It's all right. I've always wanted to paint in the dark. <laughs> well, we can see it. <laughs> well, thanks for that, Chris. That's brilliant. Because, you know, when I've come to edit the video later and I've got that, I would have gone, I would have got really perplexed. So, looking at your you might want to, but try not to um, stick with one tone, vary it. Look for darker, oh, there's a darker bit there, isn't there? I was going to say that there's a dark bit there. And gradually, as you keep going, I mean, you can spend, I've only got a short time here, but you can spend a, um, quite a bit of effort, you know, a bit of time just picking out uh, little grey bits, little shadow, well, I'm calling it grey, but it's shadow, isn't it, that I'm looking for. And spend, the more time you spend, the more you'll pick out Everything's changed now. So it's like that light off. <laughs> All the shadows look darker and everything. Um, but you'll find you can spend quite a while doing this. And I noticed that there's a line, a, a bridge on his nose that comes down. I did sketch it. And uh, onto his cheek. I'm assuming it's a he. That's well, a bit presumptuous of me, that. Quirky, that's a long word for me. <laughs> Poor old James is in hospital with his. I texted him this morning and say, Did you. <laughs> are they looking off? <laughs> Did you get any sleep? Because you never get any sleep in hospitals. He didn't answer, so he's always in a mood. I spoke to his mum, to Mel, just now, and she, she said, mentioned something about he wants to come home. Mm. I said, well, that's no good. Maybe we can find out what's wrong with you. If you're at home, you need to stay there. Because they haven't put him on a proper ward yet, so... Um, We did see a consultant or a chief yesterday who said it's more likely something to do with your... She's been diagnosed with diabetes and it's your body's, your tummy and your system's not in balance with the diabetes. Oh Just so happens Georgina, my youngest daughter, works in... No, she's middle. Um, works in a care home. She sent me a, a load of blurb about she said that it's probably down to his diabetes blah 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 and it's this could be this illness could be that you know this condition it's quite and I thought wow and then the consultant comes along and confirms well suggests it might be similar to that he wants to come home but I'm, I'm said to Mel you're going to have to be strong it's all right, I'm waffling, but I'm concentrating. It's either that or a singing whistle. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> People have paid to come and see me sing. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Now, the, the hands, the reason I was saying about the shadow lot, you can hardly see those things. If you shut your eyes, you can 
they can disappear those fingers but i did even though i i used the tray stone to get the outline i sat in front of the computer and zoomed in you can do it on an ipad or whatever i zoomed in and went you know sat there for 10 15 minutes with the pencil just going over you know picking out trying to find more detail more information to help the sketch and uh the finger <laughs> the fingers are so human it's really weird i hope i'll do a good job here today i just last week with the apple i spent part of wednesday and a bit of thursday going over it with a watercolor pencil a couple and a few washes here and there what i've done with the when i sat in front of the computer i've um just put some pencil lines where the where i can see some of the dark bits you know in the, in the what is a watercolor pencil ah surprise surprise good question hang on is it just like a colored pencil yeah there look i've got i buy these i think these come from the netherlands they're um brunzels are make i can send you the link um yeah but they this they're not the sort of thing that i don't use them at the beginning but for tightening up later on i might use it how is it a normal color pencil no it's water they're bought they're water based here you like melt it when you put water over it they're exactly the same mm. as a there's if you like their their watercolors like in my palette in a pencil okay. so you can do that you can do fine very subtle shading on your subject then if, if you think oh that looks a bit liney you can lick the end of your finger and <laughs> and smooth it down failing that you, you can also use water even though that's dry at the moment you can use water to hydrate it and use it as a create a wash and do loads of wonderful things with them and they come in myriad of colors and the beauty of those are beauty of the night um expensive isn't always best whereas usually with um watercolor paint with paint you you do know after a while well a bit of experience you do notice the um the difference in the better quality paints where's that classic one there i think that's it the one to watch out for is a brand called holbein now that I can't remember how much that little tube of paint was, but it wasn't short of a it might have been eleven or twelve quid. I was wow. There's a big difference between that and and that. That's probably eight or nine pounds and lasts me a lifetime. And that it's horizon blue is is a nice colour, but I very often go on to Jackson's Art Supplies and add all these different, um, I suppose you, you could almost call it a, a paint wish list um, into my shopping cart. And where was I on the fingers on it? And then uh, chicken out towards the end when it says, you know, start paying. <laughs> <laughs> I do it all the time. I think, oh, nah, make do. You've got enough paint. Just carry on. No one's going to move. It's not going to make a lot of difference. As I say, I'm just blocking. I'm just continuing to set the scene at the moment. 
looks a bit of a mess. Well, I don't know, he still looks quite cute. Usually leave the eye till last, but well, let's put a bit of that shadow in. Colours not. Don't get bogged down with colours, Gemma. Less is more. But tonal value is more important than colours. By that, I mean you can paint one pitch. If we'll do it, try it at some point. And your painting is a good thing to do. Is to look. Is to paint a picture all in one colour. Is a is a. Yeah, it is a good exercise. I don't do it very often. Well, I don't do it ever now. I've done it in the past using sepia. So if you're doing this like a street scene or a, a village scene, paint it in sepia and it looks like an old um, photograph, doesn't it? But it does teach you about tonal value, which is important. Um, the fingers, the other thing to you'll hear a lot is um painting in the negative just means painting the space around the chair not the chair and then once you finish the chair appears well i'm doing it to a degree now by painting the shadows around the fingers and hopefully they're, they're starting to appear and that's the same principle really it's a hard concept to um <laughs> to sit down and say right i'm going to do this unless you do what i just said paint look at a chair set it up on a thing and just block in all the colours around it and then the chair that is painting in a negative space and the chair turns up worth a go you didn't but later on when you start painting like I'm doing now you, you sort of lose track of that because you're painting what you see which <laughs> but by in order to achieve it more often than not you you're painting in the negative it's a bit like it, it relates to a little degree on that thing what i was saying earlier about painting this on the, the fruit bowl and trying to get it to not to float in midair by having different painting the, the space around it, the shadows around it in different tonal values. So they're light shadows, dark shadows, and that makes the bowl sit out and fall back and, and form itself. So it's, it's the same with figures, isn't it? If you get, if you paint a figure, can we paint a figure? Yeah, go on. Any old color, green. Um, if you paint a figure anywhere, he's a bit dark. Get some paint on the brush, it might help. If you do nothing, if so, if that was a just a lady walking down the road. You just leave it like that. It's it's doing nothing. It's just floating in midair. But as soon as you, I think this is relevant. As soon as you put a line at the bottom, it suddenly stand, It's doing something. It, it sets. It's it's on terra firma, and you can do lots of things with it after that. It makes a big difference. Now she's looking out to sea. with a nice blue sky. 
on the beach that we're going to use a bit of beachy colour from watching the waves come in see what I mean so just sticking it on sticking it the image on some foundation is really important Where am I going here? I know one thing, I'm getting, getting bored. Because you, you do, don't you? you? You think, oh, this is great. But I want to go and stick some, <laughs> a load of paint on. This thing has got eyebrows. It's got something going on. Oh, well, I put a pencil line there. But I'm just going to nick it. <laughs> oh dear. I'm gonna Google Mom up to find out what it is. Is it is it I wrote on my thing the other day, I thought it's a squirrel that doesn't climb trees. <laughs> Give me a little bit of a, a bit of shadow under there. It goes across. What's the mom up to? I think it's uh, a miniature Yeti. It's a bit like um, Frodo the Shih Tzu, isn't it? With fur. He got wet this morning. We were out. I took him for a little whiz around the park. Eight o'clock for the kids block the roads with their school and uh, you've got is that really fine rain the only reason I mention it because when I come home I've got the hair dryer out <laughs> that dog is so funny he tries to bite the hair dryer mm. but he actually likes it In, at one point he was licking it <laughs> oh dear me I know Melanie's going to go off to hospital because she's James's carer, so the only, which is okay, but the only problem I'll get is the dog wants to sit on my lap all the time, so consequences, nothing gets, oh, I'm using the wrong rigger. Oh, I've set my stall on these um, rigors from Rosemary and Co. They're much finer lines. I was thinking I'll send a link for it. They're oil brushes, but I use them for watercolour. And why not? Right. Happy Basil? Yes, dear. And the Samaritans were engaged. Helps me through the day. A bit more dark around the fingers, I think. And then crack on. Well, he has sort of come out a bit, hasn't he? I've got... I'm only using two brushes as a, at the moment. Um, one of which I can't find. It was that rigger, which is a whatever it is number two. I usually get a number two rigger from Rosemary and Co, which is an yeah. ever evergreen one, and I've got this little round brush from Terry Harrison, but there, I don't know what that is. It's probably a, it's only a little middle diddle. Terry doesn't call them numbers. He just calls it a, I don't know, can't even read it in this light. <laughs> it's just a little brush. Number four or five, I think on this Richter scale, I have to look it up. The only reason I wanted it was to put a little bit of, 
just a reminder that there's a shadow down here. If, before I go off into the... What about the background, Carol? Any ideas for... <laughs> have you got a colour scheme in mind for me? Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really okay. nice of house again. <laughs> Yellow it's green. That's what I was saying the other day, isn't it? The um, I put, I sketch these little leaf things down the bottom. I don't know what they are. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Now, never mind. It'll come back tomorrow. This dementia lark is a bit annoying. <laughs> I do it all the time. I was doing it this morning and I thought, oh, there was something I was just going to do on the computer. <laughs> and you have to go back to where you were and then come back out again and hopefully you'll get it what it was. Oh. I don't think it's a recent thing. I think I'm, <clears throat> I've always been that way. But I'm just looking for a few bits of shadow on the bottom as well. Those are green. I'm going to paint those green. I'm tempted to throw caution to the wind and paint the the background any old colour because that's the next stage. I haven't finished by a long chalk with the marmot, but I want him to settle down, dry off a bit. You can. Keep going for, you know, you put these shadowy bits anywhere. Yeah. <clears throat> Within the background as well. It's a good move to do. It's being shadow or a very light tone. The colour, see if I've got any space over here I need to worry about. The, um, that, the colours that I'm going to put on top will <clears throat> tentatively says, no, I've got to be confident, Dave. They'll um they'll blend in with the shadow bits. Da, da, da. You can there or thereabouts. It's a few bits just there. One thing I was I will mention now while I think of it. Is um, especially for Gemma, when you buy a brush, I mean, this one's probably six, seven quid, I don't know, but it for a while. You don't buy a brush just to use the pointy bit because that's just a, just put that there, really. it's just a waste of money. Yeah, we know you can get a nice line and a nice effect from the from the pointy bit, but you can do so much more if you use if you hold it, your brush at a different angle and just stroke it down. The pointy bit becomes irrelevant because you can now create foliage effects. You know, you can suddenly whack trees in and, you know, and on things like marmots. <laughs> I'm an expert in marmots. If you've got, you won't be, on a smooth paper, it'll be a little bit harder to achieve. But if you want to, if you can, probably easier with a rigger, a longer brush, but if you can draw it down very gently, don't, I'm not pushing on it, I'm just letting it, Letting the brush do what it wants to do on from the side, you can suddenly get those um furry bits, the lines between it. So which is one of the things one of the reasons that I did um that doodle there was because I just wanted to see if we could if you could do that. 
and what sort of effect you could get. It was something that was um, in my mind's eye. But I think if you care, if, you, if you're in doubt, just use a bit of paper to one side and just practice, you know, get, get the right amount of paint and flexibility on feeling dry it's dry brush work effectively or it's that's what you say <laughs> hmm. but it, it's something to be aware of that you don't just buy a brush for a pointy bit and whoops nearly fell off my tubes the other one that it's quite um, popular as well, is a lot of artists do it, or they say about it on their videos. Well, find it. So, oh, there's a good brush. And not to use really expensive brushes for this, but um, you can smash the brush. So you can get the brush and... Do that to it, and you'll get quite interesting shape. You put paint on and then do it either way. Then you can start using create foliage or whatever you want. You know, there'll be parts of a paint I'm going to do it today yet. But for example, there's these. Um, grasses here well there's no reason why either at this stage or more likely at the later stage you can just do that add some of those grasses it doesn't have to be shadow either it's a good idea to do it with a brighter color the red or the yellow to warm the picture up towards the end anyway carol's indecisive about my background <laughs> so i just I'll tell you what, I'll go for go for no, it's a mar it's a marmot Dave, not a gopher. Um I'll go for um stop it. <laughs> um reality rather than I might stand up for this actually. It's good to look for the brush that I'm gonna use there. Has it gone under? No. I put this non slidey an old flannel that I cut up to stop the brushes sliding off underneath the doodah on the board. And true to form, they still disappear. Still, they still go off. I was looking for the, ah, um, oh, there it is. So this is the third brush that I'm using, which is a, again, it's a rosemary pure squirrel series. 170, can't read the number. Don't know if that's a zero, but it's about 10 mil centimeter across. Probably the best brush I've ever, ever used. Apart from the fact that it does, they do dry out as you use them. So, by that I mean they form the water, the paint comes out and then they sort of stay in a shape like like that. And you, you're trying to paint. It's really weird. They're better when they're when they're fluid and they've got water on them. Right, and Carol, here I go. Right. <laughs> Hopefully, I won't. My marmot won't disappear. I've actually got a bigger one of those mop things, which is great for this sort of stuff clean water just make the background nice and damp because you want it to go want some colors to mingle in i'm going for a sort of a diffuse background like there is in the 
I think there is in the picture. I haven't looked at it for a while. I think I'll just go down to the grassy bit. And it's like a rock here. I'm going to treat it as such. He stood on a, a rock or some sort of ground. Try not to get on my tree. It's about the only time you can paint like you're decorating a wall. How wet to make it? Well, that would have been a good... It's a good question. Don't want it dripping, but you'll get a sheen, a feel to it. I'm just looking, you look at an angle away from it and you can see the water just sitting there. You don't want, don't want it so it pulls the water. You just want a nice damp, well, it's going to say soaking wet, but it's not. It's just nice and damp. It just comes with, you get a feel for it after a while. Right then, Carol. In the absence of any assistance, I'm going to go with, I've got some turquoise, <laughs> turquoise, cobalt turquoise. So let's whack that in and see what happens. In a way, we're back to that painting in the negative now, because I'm painting the space around the marmot, not the marmot yet. So to start off, with some, oh, I like this coming. Just trying to look at the background, see if there's any definitive dark areas within it. So, clean that water off, uh, paint off, tap the brush on the edge. A whopper in it, this brush. So I think I might go for a, a brighter shade of green. So wherever I put the blue, I, thought I can drop in the green and I'll get a green. Drop the yellow in and I'll get some green. Two colours is good. You can go right up to him, do you think? So it's just the turquoise blue and whatever yellow that is. It's, as I said earlier, I think it's golden sunset or something, but cadmium yellow is fine. Gamboji, any old, any yellow. These brushes are good because they've got the being handmade, they come to a point and it does help. It's a little bit more. I'm just feathering it in. I'm not hardly touching the paper. I'm going to do for, for that. Looks diffused, doesn't it? I don't think I need that much, too much colour in. But as I say, there's no reason, there is no right or wrong on this. It's down to you what you want to, what you want to add in. It's a feeling thing, but I was going to say, I think I was burbling on about how, or I was about to, how the, since I turned the light off and now I'm just painting in normal daylight, which is dull and not very exciting. I've said this loads of times, haven't I? It affects your painting. You think, oh, I'm going to paint a nice sunny day, a sunny painting, and it's an overcast day when you're like it is now when you're painting it. When you come back to look at it, it reflects the, the atmosphere that you're painting in more than you think. You suddenly think, oh, what happened to my lovely blue summery sky? 
But, ooh, that was scary. This is, uh, I just thought I'd drop in some raw, <laughs> a bit of raw sienna. So that's the yellow, raw sienna, and turquoise cobalt, cobalt, tur cobalt turquoise. But because the paper's really damp, it's all going to melt away, blend itself in. Just use uh, any old brush, really. Just take off any access at the bottom there. And wipe it in my tissue that I've still got in my hand. I'm at about, I was going to say 30 degrees. The board's tilted, but it's not. It's more like 15, 20. It's on a a black plastic watercolour pencil, uh, watercolour paint box. Same principle of the skies, Gemma, as well, when you're doing this. If you want to put in some clouds, just use a tissue and a brush, and you can just lift them out. So if you want a cloud somewhere, say there, just lift it off with the brush. Boom. And because it's damp, it will blend blend back in right while i'm here i'm gonna this brush has got um it's cut a funny angle just probably 60 degrees it's not 45 because that's stronger and uh but you can use it to if you had a dark enough background just to put in some grassy lines it's not going to work for me because i haven't got it's not very dark here but it would it does lift out a little bit of the white but i don't think i really need it just wait for it to dry and then i'll just put some lines in with lines of grass in with a rigger base ground how am i off for time i've been waffling so much 10 to 12. Right. Well, that should work out right. right. I've got flesh. Um, this colour here is called dune or sand. Right. I've got to go now. Okay. Well, Hang on. I can leave him here, otherwise he's going to bonkers. Yeah. Oh, God, friend, now. All right. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Be strong. Be still on the set in the day ward. Yeah. That was Mel. She's going to go off to um, hospital, see Jimbo, and uh, just drop drop my little furry friend in here. <laughs> <laughs> You'll so. be on your lap in a minute then. Well, he'll probably settle down unless he hears a a car that he thinks is the postman turn up. Anyway, that's what I was saying. That the especially for Gemma's thing, the colour that I've used here is called dune, but sand is another variation. Some call it sand, but you can mix your own up. What do you reckon? Burnt sienna. A little bit of burnt sienna. Well, I used to use just burnt sienna for sand years ago, but just a very weak um, mix of it. But that's burnt sienna and blue. You get that light gray, light gray, myriad of different grays, and you can add a, a little bit of extra color to it. So you will get it. Even add a little bit of alzira and crimson if you want to get red sand <laughs> or darker variations and drop it in. But where I put those gray shadowy bits, I'll just add a few bits to that. I want it to be um, 
too distinct. I think the foreground can of can afford to be sort of soft and gentle. While I'm here, I'll use um, raw sienna. I'm going to make a, a statement here. Because I said these are sort of leaves, aren't they, of some description. I've just put a couple of pencil lines where, where they were. And that is the shadow of that leaf on there. I'm just going to drop in a bit of raw sienna. And then go against the grain convention i'm not going to use local color i'm going to use normal blue and just drop it in so raw sienna and I, Gemma, i don't use green very often why well like because it looks like it's come out of a tin i'm i, I prefer to make green on mm. the on the paper which is just like i'm trying to do here raw sienna or a yellow on top of a it's still damp there so it's spreading yellow and you know from school you know yellow and blue gives green or in my case raw sienna and blue gives you a greeny color green out of the tube is a you're either in that camp or you're not and I and I'm in it with watercolors. It, it just looks like wrong. It looks like green out of a tube. I'll show you Viridian in a minute. I'm just going to take that off there. These tissues are, beside being handy handies, they also come creased up with lines on them. So when you get areas where it's spread, just use the straight edge to tighten it up it can help help a lot i use those craftsmen when they dry back we'll put some darker lines on there that's not bad i'm gonna have to get rid of that I don't want red sand. Now I'm looking at my little marmot friend. Should be should be dried off now. And I'm just gonna go, I think I'll have this June colour. Flesh, June, call it what you like. Burnt sienna and a little bit of blue gives you that sandy, sandy colour and just start teasing him in. See if we can find him. Just block him in. But it's, it's not the whole... It's a little bit of that raw, bit of that raw sienna there. As you go, you'll suddenly think, oh, I want to warm it up, or you want to. This brush is ideal for this, isn't it? Because it's got that fine point. Well, it's got a point on it. So you can just sort of miss bits. But he's dry, he's not wet. I've not made it wet at all i'm just relying on the water on the brush to do it i'm deliberately missing out the fingers or the bit inside the fingers the actual fingers themselves i'm looking at inside because i've painted the dark so it by the inside, I'm talking what's inside the dark, which are the fingers. I think I know what I mean. 
I'm just standing up here. I'm just blocking him, dabbing him. That's just a light grey, really, isn't it? Sandy grey colour. Chris is already tweaking her in her mind what colours to use. <laughs> what colours am I going to invent here? Yes. <laughs> and as you go, but doing this, as you go along, you can wanna, you can start to find out, you start finding, or I'm starting to find even more shadows, tones. Just try and cheese the little rascal out. Kind of tidy it up. As I say, it's, I think it's going to be one of those <coughs> get a, a dark uh, watercolour pencil at some point and just flick in some Furry bits. Yeah, it's quite sweet, different. Never going to be easy, this one. <laughs> I don't know, when was the last time we did something that was easy? <laughs> I don't think. It's Christmas. <laughs> you know, the Christmas Robin, was that? That was fairly. Did a Christmas for Robin. The other thing I was, what I was meant to say earlier, but you can use this to scratch any lines. If you use dark paint, might be handy for you, Chris. Mm. You can underpaint it white and then put um, a, 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 a fur, light furry shade on and then scratch out the fur and you'll get the white come back in the background mm. you know it'll, it'll pull it back through yeah. one of which is one of the things i was if you've got any masking fluid or a masking fluid pen that you can put loads of or well, quite a few white you know thin lines of masking fluid on and then later on, after this stage, you can rub them off and that will reveal some really fine highlights at the, uh, underneath, which would be nice to give it that extra thing, that extra bit of highlight. Let me think. I just wanted to a few bits in his fingers. But try, the problem with it is, I'm, not, I'm saying this a lot lately, but being watercolours, you can't get the solidity. You're not going to get a solid um, creature, a solid feel to it. So you've got to keep... Um, Constantly reminding myself that I'm painting a watercolor, not an, uh, an acrylic. I'm just using the rigger to flick bits out. And I've still got this shadow color over, in, <coughs> over the, in this side. So I haven't really used that many colors. I deliberately didn't clean this side of the palette out because it was from last the last couple of paintings and it was shadow colour and the darks, sort of dark colours over there. I thought, well, I'll make use of those. There's no point in washing it out and then having to mix it all up again. Just going to put a few little bit of knuckles. The boring bit goes on from here till 
Friday probably because you're just going to have to oh, just stop my hand in it. You're just going to have to pick out with a rigger and a dark tone some dark furry bits. I can't, I don't, I can't think of any other <laughs> other way of doing it other than gradually teasing them out apart from drying it off with a, or when it's dry, I'll do that in a minute, I'll dry it off with a hairdryer. I suppose really I should just sort of sit the dog on the table and... <laughs> Have a look at the dog because it's got all this furry stuff in it. But definitely the other colour for darks is burnt umber. Always comes in. And blue. My go to dark colour. You want. There's no reason why you can't add red into it, uh, red or green for that matter, but it does come out really dark. And just going back to what I was saying earlier, hopefully, and just no, because I'm this is wet. So I can't get that dry brush feel to it, but there you go. Proof of the no, it's too too dry, uh, too wet. I'm going to dry it off a bit. That's burnt umber and blue. It's made a really nice, exceptionally nice dark. That we can tease it in. It's a bit like um, if you enjoy doing botanical um, painting, isn't it? You spend days just putting in each little petal. And the nuance of each petal, flicking bits of colour in, little bits of lines. But you can see how long how long this is likely to take. It's the sort of thing you do twenty, do ten minutes, go and have a cup of tea, come back and do another go. That's the way. And just keep teasing in some I approach it. I put shadows in first. Fine lines. Talking of which. We'll get some tidy up time, isn't it? We'll see you now. Just to prove that I'm not afraid of green, I'll use a bit of green here. You can see that board? That's the green that it mixes. This is sort of hooker's green and viridian green. That viridian is awful. I never seen well. I don't see many trees of that green on it, but but mixed with um, with raw sienna or a n another colour, you get a, such a, a lovely uh, tone of green. I'm deliberately painting these things um, greener. Even though on the photo, I don't think we are. I always lift them off a bit. Just want them to look like what they are. Overcooked it there. Use the tissue just to lift it off. Gives it a furry edge. And look for a bit of darks. This is the bit that makes the picture, isn't it? The 
that last final push, just adding a few darks here and there. Something what, what I was doing. Oh, you mean the Neanderthal? Thought behind. Adding that green bit. Raw sienna and blue. Raw sienna. I just added a bit of green to show that I could do it. I wanted to. And I've actually put some pencil lines on here, so I'm just going to follow them using this rigger. Hopefully, we can put some grassy feels to it. If I go good, it comes back again. This is the bit that always drives you to distraction. Trying to get a fine line. And I'm doing it all wrong. Should be, you're better off, don't hold the brush at the bottom. Don't do as I do, do as I say. Don't hold it at the bottom. If you hold it at, at the bottom, like I started off doing, you'll get a, a thicky, yucky edge. If you hold it further down, you get less control. You get a much finer, nicer line. Come on. Join that up somewhere. It's smaller finger. That's it. I'll stand up and have a look at it. Little finger. Right, now it's got to there. And once you get going, when you get a nice fine line, you won't want to stop. Shame about that one. Stupid boy. Anyway, that's why I was saying it. I'll make mistakes so you don't need to. If you hold it at the end, get you'll get much <coughs> a much finer, nicer twig. Then you can smash your brush up and put a few another leaf there. I think there's some. It's it's all vague. And, uh, my eyesight ain't good enough. I can't see what these things are. I think there's some sort of grassy, scrubby type of stuff. Fascinating that. that looks, this side of the picture looks like a totally different um, subject. It almost looks surreal over this side. A bit like me, I suppose. Been surreal. Put a few bottoms on on them. Had a real bit of dark here and there. As per usual, my picture is my paper is soaking wet, so I'm frightened to look in maybe. Just had a few darks here and there. This is it's a marmot from a sci-fi movie. Like I wouldn't want to mess with this one. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Hello, Dave. Can you hear me? Yeah. I've been looking at marmots. They're actually what the Yanks call groundhogs. Oh well. It's in the squirrel <laughs> family, okay. ground squirrel, they're called. Well. I don't think I'll be paint. Yeah, I reckon it's just, they're just terrestrial squirrels. Squirrels that can't jump up trees. Perhaps we shouldn't talk about squirrel hair brushes in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> be interesting to see, yeah, well, do they make brushes out of marmot? <laughs> really came out as marmite then. <laughs> I love them or hate them anyway, yeah. You can see the, the, how long is this Gemma won't know George but George unfortunately passed on but he used to love painting 
um, David Attenborough animals and things like that. And he would spend days flicking in little bits of hair into, you know, a lion, a tiger, all kinds of things. And uh, I'm getting into that territory here, which I'm, I'm not overly chuffed doing. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to the shadow. Well, a chunk of it. Because I want... Yeah, there you go. So it's a bluier grey. I don't know why. But I just want his eye to look a bit bluer. Just leave the little bit there. I'll dry it off. No, I better not. <laughs> Don't go for a wobbler. <laughs> if it's like you've already done me once, go on. I'm just very light. I'm using the side of the paper just, just to take the the bolt, no, the bolt, just to take the edge off the the dark paint that I'm using. I'm just flicking it on. And you can get some really fine little hairs coming out. Now, I'm, I've been painting for a while now. I'm only three or four weeks. <laughs> no. And it's taken me, what, 100 years to discover these brushes. These evergreen, they're, they're for painting oils. Oh, that's what they're designed for, from rosemary. But as a rigger for doing this sort of thing, really fine lines, there's still paint coming out of it now. I, it's so much better than a normal watercolour rigger, in my mind. You can just... I think actually looking at it, I need a bit of yellowy. This is the problem you get at this stage of proceedings. You'll, you'll be looking at the, the, paint, the um, reference picture and you'll start to see different nuances, colours and tones poking out. I think the the basis of it's there. I'm quite pleased with it. Raw umber might be a handy. I don't have raw umber in my palette, but I'm aware of. But if you mix some um, burnt umber with some raw sienna, it gives you a raw umber anyway, or that sort of tone. It would be a good colour. This is a very subtle brown, so it might be a handy one to have a go at Mr Marmot with. But as I say, the dune or sand colour seems to work really well. It's that sort of stage now where you become a a makeup artist, you just put in cheesy colours around. I don't know what the hell's going on down here. It doesn't look very nice. Bit of yellow, bit of blue. See if we can get a greeny, olivey green colour. So it went there. Side of the brush, click it up. Same there. 
Where's the brush I smashed earlier? Somewhere around here. I don't know why I put all these brushes out, because I only ever use four or five at the most. Is that it? Yeah. Let's um oops. Smash it out. It's got a bit of yellow on it at the moment. The dogs didn't like that banging. He's just sat down quiet at the moment, but somebody's just made a noise out the front. So just practice this on a blank bit of paper first. Just as well I did that. I wanted it just a little bit of warmth. So it's all right, dog. No one here. He hears a noise outside. It's he wants to jump up. There's somebody with a van. Or it is for me. I I ordered a fence panel and it just turned up. So if the bell goes, I'll run downstairs and come back. I'm just adding a, a little bit of warmness to it, to these twiggy bits that I put. You could use um, spatter it. And that would be interesting. I don't know. That's a, my just had an email from Wix saying your delivery has arrived. Have a nice day. Well, there you go. Not too bad. I think what I might do is find all the techniques are here today. Find a toothbrush. Maybe one of my areas. Toothbrush and a little bit of paper. Any old bit of paper. Cover that up. Cover that up. Make it damp. Put loads of bits of colour floating around in it. So, no. oh just make the ground a little bit more. I'm just using the, some of the paint that's left over in the palette. I want to. Especially that little bit of red, because that'll warm the whole thing up. So look at that, see what it looks like. Not too bad. There you go. Makes them stand out a little bit. Um bit of tissue. Which side, which way did we say the shadow was? Coming from front. From the right, wasn't it? No, from the left. So if I just drag the tissue over that, it'll smudge it a little bit the little spattery bits okay and now i'll just add a little bit more shadowy bits over here i think yeah i think i'll just drop a bit in there and then uh, You'll turn that into a rock. Rocky ant crop. Mm. Oh well. It's a bit of a sci fi movie picture there. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's get my hair dry. Just give it a quick zuzz. And then
Well, we do pay them. Mm -hmm. I thought we were going to be in for only two hours. It's you that used to take a picture, not me. <coughs> I can see it today, actually, because I don't know where you went. I wouldn't do it like that anyway. Oh, it's quite good, really, cause just considering it's the um, the reverse side of the paper. Well, I was going to quickly is just say these watercolor pencils, Gemma. Mm. You just um, you can buy them in sets. Just around as well, it was a big set. Uh, but I've also use over the years over time i've brought up um additional colors one of the ones i i use a lot lately is a it's a skin tone one flesh <coughs> it's, um, it's really handy because you can tighten up any part of a pic any picture really it goes anywhere it's a sort of a, a neutral color and you can sort of fill in any details you want. Just add it in. And the other colour I've got here is gold. <laughs> Believe it or not. A gold one. It's quite handy. Just adds a little bit of a glow to to proceedings. But the thing about these pencils, is if you've got bits that you think just need softening down, or softening, you won't notice it straight away. But as time goes by, you, you sort of think, well, that needs a little bit of a, just a little bit of a, a I, I use the word tightening up a lot, but tidying up, tightening up, just smooth it, smooth it off. Um, that colour there, that is, is almost raw sienna. And as I say, George used paint animals all the time and portraits and we used to I'll show you the other bit he does you can do as well finishing off he's we we sat there and you'd hear George scratching away they say what are you scratching away at? and that's what you'd be doing this be using a pencil just to add in the, the final you know those little furry bits or whatever and get a sharp craft knife and scratch it out as well. You used to do that a lot. I've got one here somewhere, hang on. <coughs> Just to. This... Just so happens. This craft knife is older than my children. I think James is 37. And I had it a good, good few years before I met him. I used to work in um, Watford College, photography department, well, printing. And we used to, and they gave us, used to dish out these pens, uh, these knives. <laughs> It's like the only thing I've, I've got from all those years ago, 1983, I don't know, 80, you know, 1982, something like that. Well, what you can do with watercolour is just spend a considerable amount of time in your life scratching out bits of highlights and that. So all the techniques, are here this morning. Um, how you utilize them is personal preference and patience. Really. I remember being in, in class with George, and you'd, you'd be doing this for <laughs> scratching away for ages, but it is a good way of. I've uh, put in an extra detail, highlights, depends what you want. If you want a photographic feel to it, then you can do it. Um, 
don't think his blade's particularly sharp, so it's not actually flicking it out. <laughs> of course, the other string you've got to your bow to use a white watercolour pencil at some point, just to, just to add even more subtlety to that. In Photoshop or graphic arts program, Photoshop, you use um, a blur to you use a blur tool or brush to um, make things uh, it's not stand out, but just to make them look more interesting, more. I don't always use these pencils, but I think on That's a nice one. That just to soften some of the work you've done, works really well. Yeah, mm. fine. I think that's the only bit I think I'm not use is get a bit more of the shadow. Say shadow, it's just dark part of the palette that's developed. Just take the edge off that brush. And I'm just gonna look it out over this where this background's not should have gone a bit further over with it really. So I've got a choice, so I can even rehydrate it. And push the background over onto the marmot or move the marmot over to the background a bit, which I'm doing at the moment. Probably the wrong choice actually looking at. It. Yeah. Definitely looks like a little yeti. I wish I hadn't mentioned that. <laughs> but the was it the yeah, the abominable doodah in America. <laughs> Strange creature. Really? Bit of white yeah. for completion. Just to blur any hard lines. And you, well, I look forward to seeing what you lot do. Mm. Shame Joyce isn't here. Yeah. She paints um, some flowers. No, I'm just. I'm just divering there. Mm -hmm. Fiddling. That's what I want to say, isn't it? I'm just fiddling with it now. Mm -hmm. There's a few pencils. I don't know. I can't make up my mind whether I like this or not. <laughs> but what I did notice. What I do notice is, mm -hmm. as these things change, this was last week's, and it's it's totally different when you look at it in the morning. The watercolors, I think, they dry back, and it, and next day you look at it again, you think, oh, that's that's fine. It just needs a little bit of, you know, TLC here and there. And, and it will sort of evolve over a cup of tea and a bowl of Buda <laughs> over the next day or so. Because when's a, when's a picture ever finished? Mm. In actual fact, they aren't, are they? I mean, as a... Obviously, is a commission or a painting you're working on for someone is only finished when they bought it and you got the money in your bank. Up to that point, you're forever looking at it, thinking, hmm, maybe this, maybe that. I've got a big, a flipping great painting downstairs of a beach scene 
with a couple on the beach that obviously just got married. I did a couple of those. And at some point, to make it sellable and mean, meaningful, I've got to take it apart, take it out of the frame, scrub the <laughs> scrub the people off, and re you know make it more serene without figures in it. So they don't ever finish. You'll you'll be always finding new things to paint. Oh, it's not too bad. I'm going to leave the marmot because I think. He might, he might look a bit interesting tomorrow. What I would say is, every time I say I'm going to leave something, I end up doing something to it, just to say it may work. Well, I'll try it. I've got some tissue before we go to lunch. I've got a little bit of that turquoise. I'm just gonna make it really wet. Well, I'm gonna stick a bit of it on the, the bird. Bird on the just introduce it to where the shadows are. And a bit around his cheek and up there. Just to I don't know, just change it a bit. Whatever. Hard guys. Mm. <laughs> Have a change the temperature. Hmm. The light's a bit monkey in this. So I've been painting in the dark as well. Looks all right to me. Challenging. That's really good. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> you can come again. <laughs> no, um, it's not It's how you get there. It's more important, isn't it? You know. Um, yeah, I think it, I like that. Mm. I think it is. It, it it'll grow on me. Mm -hmm. He's very cute. Mm. I don't. I can't think of another way. There, there's a myriad ways of painting it, but it's not the way I. I, I can't do it. Joyce can do it. She's not here this morning, but. She'll come out with one. She'll watch this video. Hang on, I've got to change my microphone. Yeah, yeah Joyce, Joyce will have a go at this and she'll come up with something totally different. Mm. When you get a minute, you have to, Gemma, you have to go on to, the, to our little gallery and <laughs> browse through all the artist's pictures. And, because at the moment, I've got, I think everyone that comes regularly, they've got their own little gallery on there. Um, How do I get onto the gallery? Uh, I'll send you a link. I'll, I'll send you a link. And um, you can flick through each one's gallery and look, browse through <laughs> the images. And uh, it's so different. Everyone does it so, and Joyce's are. I don't know how she does it, but they're 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 very different. Amazing, in fact. Mm. I think I'm one of her. I'm her biggest fan. <laughs> I found these things on. Hang on. I found these things on um, online for a finger. My my. My two forefingers are always hurting. I think it's playing the guitar all the time, I think. Or something like that. It's arthritis anyway. But I find these little little things that you put on them. 
The trouble is, you can't bend your finger. It's like well out of order. Oh. Right. Bang, which is good. And sometimes restricting the movement of your fingers is is really good because you want that nice straight line, don't you? Sort of thing. Mm. It's good fun. How are we off for time? Oh, flipping heck! <laughs> Over time. This has gone <laughs> right into loose women now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Forget You've that. You've got your Steph. little doggy there. Can we see him? Oh, yeah. Let's have a look at him. Steph's, Steph's pack lunch is back now. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, he growled at me. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> we just <laughs> painted the same <laughs> sort of thing. Cute, isn't he? He's camera yeah. shot. <laughs> we'll have to have a go at painting him, won't we? Yeah, yeah. Can we paint him? Good. Get a nice picture of him. Yeah. <laughs> He's back oh. with his hair, oh, hair cut in on the 19th. So, All right. Nice. You can see, though, he's got the same sort of fur as yeah. marmot. marmot. <laughs> I've got mermaids <laughs> coming out in a minute. <laughs> That's been really great fun this morning. I've, um, I've worked hard there. Yeah. Well, I've tried to give Gemma as much information as I can to go forward. So it was really helpful. Thank you. It's all there. It's just a matter of whacking it in. It's not as easy as it looks, though, is it? No. <laughs> and remembering it all. <laughs> That's it. Well, yeah, I'll do the video later on. Mm. And whack that in. What sort of paints, uh, paintings do you like to do, Gemma? Well, I, I guess the only like medium I've really used is acrylic, but I normally try and do landscapes. And then I took a, a life drawing class at the end of last year, like three weeks. So that's what I've done so far. Oh, oh wow. Well, that yeah. sounds more impressive than it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember doing one of those a few years ago. Yeah. We like doing yeah. portraits. We got we got to go back doing just doing some portraits. Oh gosh, they turn out horrendous sometimes. Which is hard, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are hard. The way I paint the marmot is the same as you do the portrait though, isn't it? You know. Well, that's the classic. All marmots look the same though, so it doesn't be any marmot if you point a portrait, it doesn't look like them. Look like them. <laughs> Don't know you. Don't let a marmot hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Let's see what we come up with. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. I'm looking forward to doing it. Might be. <laughs> oh. That'd be fun. Yeah. 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 Oh well. See you all. That's a I'm flipping starving. What about you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I'm calling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then we'll see you all next week. Then. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> awesome. Right. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the end of the meeting for all button. So. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye. 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 Get them brushes Bye. working. Bye. I'm going. Mm -hmm. Look at me. I'm as helpless as a kitten in my a tree Feel like I'm clinging to a cloud But I can't understand I feel misty Just hold your hand
Well, that was that was raw. <laughs>